this year we watched under consumption core trend. And prior to that in 2023, we saw the popularity of de-influencing. And the rise in popularity of both of these movements would suggest a public understanding that maybe we're buying too much. And this level of consumption is both unsustainable and I would argue unenjoyable. I was watching a video recently from my friend Hope Mess Tom, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they said something along the lines of, the most fun part of makeup should be the process. It should be the applying and the playing. It should not be the buying. It should not be sitting there waiting for the item to arrive. It should not be the unboxing. It should be the applying and the wearing. But for a lot of us, I would argue that our love of makeup is less of an actual love of makeup and more a love of consumption. <laughs> Normally for my makeup musings, I do a pretty in-depth outline beforehand. I have a lot that I know I wanna say, but for this video in particular, I kinda of wanna talk a little bit more off the cuff because the idea of conscious consumption has really been a pillar of my channel since its inception. And throughout my time on YouTube, I have done project pans, shot my stash videos, I have done no buys, I have done low buys, and I really dissected the relationship that I have with makeup and with just purchasing in general, even in categories outside of makeup. And this is gonna be a bold take, but I really believe that the more product you have, the less you can really enjoy what you have. Like I said, I've done periodic no buys over the years and low buys, I've documented many of them. And this has been a while ago, but I felt like throughout those no and low buys, I learned a lot of lessons about consumption and my own shopping habits. And one idea I would always come back to was that I felt more creative when I was restricted from buying more. And I think this topic applies pretty much anywhere, though we're obviously zooming in on makeup because that's what this channel is focused on, but we could use the idea of fashion as well. I know this year in 2024, I put myself on a no buy in January because I love thrifting. It can be my weakness. Sometimes I just, I wanna thrift all the time. And I was like, you know what, Kelly, throughout January, just wear your clothes. Don't buy anything new, don't go shopping, don't go looking for more inspiration. Find inspiration with what you have. You know, these are all items of clothing that you bought in the past because you were excited by them, wear them. And I will tell you what, in the month of January, I put together some of my favorite outfit combinations because I was forced to step outside my comfort zone, be a little bit creative, try combinations of things that I'd never worn before. And when I've done makeup no buys in the past, I've had an identical experience where I was then reaching into palettes that I had had forever that I wasn't really using and thinking, you know what, I never use this green shade. Let me use it today. Which by the way, I did not say from the beginning, in the theme of this video, we will be doing a full face of nothing new today. And as always, I'll have everything listed down below since I won't really be talking about the products too much, but this was the REM foundation. I just did a shot my stash. It was the last video that you saw. So if you haven't seen it, I can leave it linked down below. It was a full reset video. I did other makeup related chores in that video, but there is a shot my stash in there if you wanna see that. And most of these items are pretty much all from the shop my stash. Okay, but going back to the idea of like the more things you have, the less you can enjoy those things. I want to paint an example here, okay? To really illustrate the idea that the more things you have, the less that you get to use your favorite things. So I'm gonna use another fashion related example here. And for the point of making this very straightforward, I want to imagine you have seven blouses, okay? Just seven. And every day of the week you wear one of them. And I know that this is simply not realistic, but for the sake of keeping this example easy to follow, just stick with me, okay? You have seven blouses. You wear one blouse every single day of the week, but your favorite blouse is this beautiful red one. And once a week, you get to wear this favorite blouse. Yes, you enjoy the other six, but the red one is your absolute favorite. So the day that you get to wear that, you're so excited, you look forward to it, because it's your favorite, okay? Now imagine you go on a shopping spree and you buy a ton of stuff and you bought seven more blouses and now you have 14 blouses total. Well, if you continue to only wear one every single day and rotate in order, now you only get to wear the red blouse every two weeks. So you went from getting to wear it every seven days and now it's only once every 14 days. Now I know that is not a perfect example because obviously you have free will and can choose to wear the red blouse whenever you want to, but this is an idea I like to keep in mind whenever I'm shopping, whether it's for cosmetics, for clothing, for anything. And it keeps me so much more decisive when I'm shopping because I think, would I like this more than what I already have? And that's the interesting thing when it comes to beauty. You know, we always seem to be searching for the next best thing. Even if we already have something that we really, really like. For example, 
the perfect timing. This is my favorite concealer. This is my holy grail. If you've ever been on my channel before, you've heard me talk about this because I never shut up about the Natasha Denona concealer. It's amazing. I don't have any complaints with this, ma did I call it mascara before? This, I do this all the time. Did I say mascara or concealer? I always use those words interchangeably in a way that makes no sense. And then I'm watching myself back when I'm editing the footage and I'm like, why did you say that? But anyways, this concealer. I don't have any complaints with it. There is nothing about this concealer that I apply and think, oh, I wish it was a little bit more of this, or I wish it was a little bit more of that. And so in that case, you would think my hunt for concealer would be over. I have my holy grail. What is the purpose of buying another concealer? I'm not gonna like it more than this. And believe me, I have found that to be true. Anytime I try a new concealer, many of them I still enjoy. And I think, you know what, this is good. This is good. I don't dislike it, but did it outperform that one? No. And yet I still feel this almost insatiable urge to like keep trying new concealers, even though I have my holy grail. I have one that I don't, I don't genuinely, I really don't think I'll be able to top. But again, I think that kind of feeds back into the idea of now the more that I have, the less enjoyment I'm finding from it because now I have multiple concealers and I almost feel this, this shame and this need to use the ones that I like less because you know, they're not bad. I don't dislike them. I'm not gonna declutter them, but I don't like them nearly as much as my Natasha Denona concealer. And then I'm taking away time that I could be using that and days where I could be using that and having a better experience with it, more enjoyment from it. And knowing that, knowing, you know, I have a concealer that I love. You might have something that is a holy grail in your collection. Why do we still feel the urge to always seek out the newest, the next best thing to buy more? Why are we so insatiable when it comes to cosmetics? I think for a lot of it, it's kind of this loop where you have this urge and this craving to go buy something you go make this online purchase from Sephora. You get the little dopamine hit of buying it online at Sephora, and then you get to ride that out for the next couple of days while you're waiting for it to arrive. You get to experience it also when you're unboxing it, you're swatching it, and then you're using it for the first time. And then after that, in theory, again, the enjoyment should be the using of the product, but that's rarely the case. A lot of times, once we've gotten it, once it's part of our collection, then the urge creeps back up of, okay, well now I need to go buy something else to get back into that cycle. And it's really just a loop. I mean, advertisers are spending millions of dollars to keep us in this loop, to keep us feeling a sense of FOMO, to keep us feeling this like fear of not getting a limited edition item before it sells out, fear of not having the next best new foundation that everybody's talking about that's way better than the foundation that was the next new best thing a month ago. I did a video earlier this year about all the new makeup categories that seem to be popping out of nowhere. I can leave that one linked down below, but I talked about how we seem to be making up like new things overnight, like bronzing drops, which we know are just liquid bronzers, but you know, they have this new name, this like shiny new look, and again, and there's that FOMO for the customer of like, oh, I don't have bronzing drops, even though you do, you probably have a liquid bronzer and they are the same thing. And again, you're just always stuck in this loop of feeling the urge and the desire to buy more. So how do you get out of that loop? You know, as I referenced earlier in this video, going on no buys and low buys have, it's been very beneficial for me in my, my shopping journey throughout my lifetime to be more reflective about when I'm buying things, why I'm buying them, when I feel the urge, why I feel the urge, and kind of unpacking that. I also love the idea of getting reacquainted with your makeup collection, however that looks for you. You know, I, like I said, I just did a Shop My Stash. It was the last video I put up. And if you've never done a Shop My Stash or if you're not familiar with that terminology, it's basically when you go into your makeup collection and you pick out a collection, like a mini collection of products you wanna use and focus on for the coming weeks or months. So basically going shopping, but in your collection. So in a way, I will say, if you're someone who feels almost like a shopping addiction or just this urge to buy more, a lot of times shopping your stash kind of fulfills that excitement to have something new and cycle something in, switch things up without actually going out and purchasing a new item. Or even project panning, that's something else I referenced in this video, and if you're not familiar with project panning, it's basically a series where you document your progress using makeup up. Well, it could be, you could use it outside of makeup, to be honest. You could project pan the food in your cabinet. It's basically just the idea of documenting yourself trying to use something up. And what was really beneficial for me for from project panning for years and years 
was that it kept me really aware of how long it takes to use up makeup. Because before I would pan, I feel like I was kind of living in delusion. Like once I would hit pan on a product, like just get a tiny baby pan in it, I would panic. I would run out to the store and buy a backup because I was under the impression that, okay, I've hit pan, so this is about to be empty. And that is far from the truth. Like that, that was the biggest thing Project Panning taught me is that most products have so much more in them than we even realize. Like a lot of us have more makeup than we could probably realistically use up in our lifetimes. And that was something that became really aware to me throughout project panning for years. I would have foundations that would only have like a tiny little bit left in the bottom and I would think to myself, okay, well this is gonna be done in like four days and then it would take me four months to use it. And project panning really just kept me more realistic about the amount of makeup that I had because it was keeping me accountable for how long it took me to actually use those products up. And I know you might be thinking to yourself, I don't wanna do that, that does not sound appealing. What I will say is a lot of times, it's not even necessarily something you need to be doing long term. For me, the lessons I learned through project panning, even though I'm not doing a project pan these days, like I'm still aware of all of those lessons. Like, yes, now I just use my products differently and I don't choose to specifically work out of a project pan like stash, but everything I learned from panning, I'm still taking into account when I'm buying makeup, when I'm interacting with it. Same with no buys or low buys. Even though I'm not actively on one right now, I still implement all the lessons that I've learned on my previous ones every time that I'm shopping now. So it doesn't have to be this like permanent lifestyle switch. Even if it's not something you're choosing to do long-term, just trying out one of these options could be what you need to almost reboot your mind to get you out of that constant loop. Okay, I'm going to use one of my favorite palettes from last year. This is from ColourPop. It's one of the giant ones. It is the Bare Necessities palette. Also the, um, the powder that I was using on my face just now, this is the last year palette. What am I saying? This is the Hourglass Holiday palette from last year. This was the Jellyfish one. I used a little bit of everything. I used this, 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 and this. I, hmm, this is gonna be like kind of cool toned, not too cool toned I'm thinking, but let me just start with a few of these beiges. But another piece of advice, and one that I'm sure you've heard many, many times is being aware of who you're following. And I know that one sounds obvious. Like surely if you're trying to buy less, it would not be beneficial to be consuming content where the creator is saying things like, run out and buy this, or like, run, don't wait. But like, that that's obvious. But beyond that, something that I look for when I'm seeking out creators that I want to follow is a very critical eye. And this is something that I think is often perceived as negativity, but I would argue that it's actually discernment. This is something as a creator that I try to be very intentional about, especially as someone that reviews makeup products. In 2024, I will say most launches are decent. They, they are. Most makeup that you can go and buy today wouldn't be too bad. And it was not the same scenario 10 years ago. Like there was a much greater range between what was good and bad in makeup launches years prior. And so as a reviewer myself, I try to be very definitive and decisive in my reviews when something is great or just good. There are so many products that come out where I'm like, this is good, but it's not gonna change your life. It's not gonna be better than the blush that you already have. You know, it's that difference between good and great. Let me zoom in though. I feel like I wanna get closer for eyes. Okay, also I film with natural light and you know, post daylight savings. It's getting dark so fast. So I'm like, let me get closer to the camera so it's not so dark. But I really think that eye for formula and the willingness to be critical is what attracts me to a lot of creators that I follow. You know, there will rarely be a makeup product that is all pros and no cons. So looking for creators that are willing to be transparent about the downsides of a product, even if it is a good product, is what will make you and myself a better consumer. Hmm, this is the part in the eye look where I'm always like, do I wanna keep it matte? Maybe I do, or, ah, the shimmers are kind of calling my name though, actually. Maybe just a little bit. Should we do Rumored or Silk Teddy? Hmm, I think Silk Teddy we'll start with. And I don't want a ton of this. I'm kind of just gonna tap it, ooh, pretty. More on the inner portion, just to give us a little brightness. Those are my suggestions from the angle of shopping. 
But from the perspective of loving makeup and falling back in love with it and making your experience about the makeup itself, I would suggest doing more playing, okay? You, have you heard of shower makeup? This is something you might already be doing. This is something I have always done and then I started hearing people on the internet Got so distracted there was a squirrel on my fire escape i'm gonna scare the crap out of me it's the idea of the makeup right before you get in the shower you know very low risk at this point you are about to go wash everything off you know you're about to get in the shower this is when you can have so much fun with your makeup just sit in front of your vanity or your mirror or in your bathroom do a colorful cut crease do some super bold blush a dark brown lipstick just something you wouldn't normally do play around or maybe try a makeup trend that you wouldn't necessarily think was for you i did a video last month about the no mascara trend which is funny to be talking about right now while i am applying mascara but that's been a trend i've been having a ton of fun with just doing my makeup and switching it up and just not putting mascara on. You know, experiment with your makeup. Try playing with things in a way you wouldn't normally. Okay, I wanna do kind of a berry lip to match this. So I'm taking the CoverGirl Outlast Lip Stain in the shade Natural Blush. I like to start off lining my lips and then taking my finger to blur it out. And if we go a little too far with the blur, you can just take the sponge, kind of clean that up. And for gloss, this is Need Her from Patrick Ta. I'm really working against the sun right now as it's setting so early. And you know, I understand the thrill of buying something. I understand the excitement and the desire there, especially when we are already so socially conditioned to want that, to feel that. Consumption is very intentionally built into our culture, so it makes sense that we feel this desire. But a pillar of my channel will always be conscious consumption, so I like bringing these topics to videos so we can kind of dissect why we're shopping, how we're shopping, and if there are ways that we can change and evolve that. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope if anything, it left you more inspired to use the makeup you have instead of feeling a need to go out and buy more because I promise you the stuff you already have is fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in my next one. Bye.